Yes. Okay. Bring this. Bring this meeting to order. If everybody could please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, Ms. Hamill, can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Mr. Sermonera. Here. Mrs. Hamill, here. Mr. Kurt. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Potts. Here. Mr. Shaheen. Here. Ms. Kordowski. Here. Mr. Wolf. Here. And Mr. Bates. Here. Okay. Um, under announcements, um, a couple of things. Number one, we had an executive session last Friday of the board to discuss personnel, and we had another executive session just prior to this meeting to discuss uh, personnel. Also, we had a change to the um, agenda. We're adding under uh, number 12, personnel approvals, C3D. Uh, reads Charlie, is it um, Wiedemeyer? Yes. Stage crew, six to eight, middle school, at $1,755.00, effective November 26, 2013, replaces Ryan Hoffman. Okay. Any other um, agenda edits from the board? Okay, seeing none. Um, we'll move on to procedures for public participation. Uh, inside the blue jacket cover of the agenda, you'll find the, um, the policy for addressing the board and commenting on tonight's agenda items. Having said that, uh, are there any public comments? missing 
Thank you. Mr. Schott, I just wanted to welcome you back. We've missed you, and I say that sincerely. And thank you for your comments. Any other public comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. We have um, a little sad note to start out with this evening. Um, for those of you who do not know it, one of our uh, longtime food service employees passed away unexpectedly last month. Uh, her name is Mrs. Gail Grady. Her last uh, place of employment was here at Daniel Boone High School. And if uh, we would just like to ask everyone here in attendance tonight to please bow your head for a moment of silence, please, in her honor. Thank you. Okay, um, we have a number of recognitions tonight. Obviously, we want to recognize our outgoing board members as well tonight. But before we get to that, uh, we have our first um, piece of business. Is each year the Lions Clubs around the world proudly sponsor the Lions International Peace Poster Contest in local schools and youth groups. The art contest for kids encourages young people worldwide to express their visions of peace. Students ages 11 to 13 participated in the contest in the Daniel Boone School District, and we are happy to award tonight to 8th grader Gabrielle Reyna, who designed the winning poster, which represented the Amity Lions Club in this year's contest. So uh, congratulations to Gabby, and we have a nice certificate for you. BCT student of the quarter, we've invited Joshua Moore. Is Joshua here this evening? No, we asked them to come. Sometimes things happen, so we'll make sure Joshua is honored for his um, accomplishments at the BCTC this quarter. Okay, before we move on to our, our regular um, endeavors for the evening, I'd like to honor Mr. Shaheen, Mr. Shermanaro, Mr. Potts, and Mr. Wolf with a, a brief statement, a little bit about their activities. And a little bit of, um, from my perspective, again, to repeat some of the things that Mr. Schott said. So we'll start in, in, um, with the most experienced first. So, Mr. Shaheen, this is your moment. Mr. Shaheen began his service on the school board on December 1, 2005, after being elected as a write-in candidate for a four-year term. He then ran again in 2009 and was re-elected to another four-year term, which is now coming to a close. During his tenure on the board, Mr. Shaheen has served as board vice president over a number of years and legislation, legislative action representative. In addition, Mr. Shaheen has served on various board committees, including the Economic Advisory Group, the Negotiations Committee, the Transportation Committee, and as chair of the Curriculum and Instruction Committee. Also on finance, revenue. Have finance. you been? I, I may have missed a few. I think just about every committee uh, he's been on board. And also, uh, I just want to, one of the other things, we have a, a token of our appreciation and also PSBA, a certificate for eight years of service, which we will give you in a minute. But um, on behalf of the entire board and administration, Walt, I um, want to thank you for your eight years of dedication and commitment. Um, it's pretty much the same thing that Mr. Schatz says to everything you've done for the kids here in this community, and we wish you well as you begin your transition to a new phase of your life. So congratulations.
just before we move on to the others, it's just a little narration here. Um, in his role as vice president, I we spend a lot of time talking on the phone, different board members, and Walt and I have spent a lot of time talking over the years. Um, and again, as has been alluded to, there aren't always agreements, but for the most part, um, we find a way to get things done. Walt has been uh, done a yeoman's job with our curriculum instruction committee, which was a recommendation I made as superintendent a couple years ago. There wasn't one when I got here. And Walt has taken the leadership to keep curriculum and instruction at the forefront. So I really want to thank you for doing that. That's a very important part, obviously, uh, along with all the financial stuff. But um, again, Walt, you've been a stalwart on the board. And um, I know I'm not too far behind you and heading out the door as well. But it's been a pleasure to have worked with you over the last uh, five and a half years. Next, Mr. Scott Potts. He began his service on the board December 1st, 2009 after being elected to a four-year term as an Amity Township representative. We're kind of losing that now with these new regions. During his tenure on the board, and forgive me if I missed anything, you can certainly chime in, Mr. Potts has served as a PSBA representative, and he has also served on various board committees, including the Transportation Committee, the Curriculum and Instruction Committee, and as chair of the Facilities Committee. So again, Scott, thank you for your four years of, of wonderful service to the community, and uh, I'm sure the board's going to miss you. Again, just a little story, you know, talk, Scott's always would be the one always seeking me out at football games and we talk about what was going on with just about everything. It was a good time to get business done on a Friday night during a football game, but I can remember calling him at his place of work and always get put on hold and wait to talk to him, but eventually Scott would be that one board member on a Saturday. I'd look at my phone and go, who is this? And it would be Scott because he had something very pressing to talk to me about. So I'll miss that a little bit, but it's been, it's been a great uh, run working with you as well. Next, Mr. Frank Seminaro began his service on the board on December 1, 2009, after being elected to a four-year term as a Union Township rep. Again, what's up, Region 3 now, I think. During his tenure on the board, Mr. Seminaro has served several, or served several years as board treasurer, a very important position on the board. And in addition, he has served on various committees, including the Finance Committee, the Revenue Enhancement Committee, and as chair of the Policy Review Committee, which, again, is a committee that we have... Um, taken very seriously, and Mr. Seminaro has done uh, a yeoman job again with that. So for your four years again, Frank, we'd like to thank you as well. Congratulations. Now the story I'm going to tell about Frank has nothing to do with Daniel Boone. Frank and I share a common love of vineyards, and uh, we were out traveling one week, and I came around the corner, and there was Mr. Sermonaro. I was 300 miles from home, and I think he was as shocked as I was. But um, we've had a good run. Again, Frank, you've been uh, um, another voice on the board. Each board member brings their own unique spirit and, and, and set of values and, and information to the board. Uh, Frank's been uh, very good with helping push a lot of technology initiatives forward with the board. Um, Mr. Potts with his facilities knowledge, Mr. Shaheen with his curriculum you need to understand that the, that the board position is a very important one, and every one of these board members, um, we're, we're, we're going to be uh, have some big shoes to fill uh, in the coming years. So finally, Mr. Mike Wolf. Mr. Wolf began his service on the board on December 1, 2011, after being elected to a four-year term as a Birdsboro representative. During his tenure on the board, Mr. Wolf has served as the BCTC representative and the earned income tax representative. In addition, Mike has served on various board committees, including facilities, revenue enhancement, the transportation committee, and the negotiations committee. Even though your tenure was kind of cut short here, Mike, you've been a great board member, and I want to congratulate you on your service as well. Thank you very much. We have a correction there. It was only a two-year. I thought it was a four-year. we got to get our records straight in the office. It feels like four years. And I was going to say, nevertheless, you get, you get one and a half days for every day served. So, um, again, I think Mr. Wolf, um, I know he was active. Um, I remember, I first remember you when we extended the walking routes for the 
students over at Birdsboro and you showed up and, and you expressed your opinion and, and that's what it takes. So you have to get involved. Um, Mr. Wolf was involved long before he ever stepped on the board. And again, to all four of you, and also I just want to congratulate Tamara for her re-election. Since she's not leaving, we don't really need to go into that. So, there you have it. Uh, how about a nice round of applause for all of our outgoing board members? Actually, I just wanted to also comment. Um, I was trying to think of putting down something in writing, but uh, I was almost at a loss of words, uh, which is hard to believe, I know. Um, it's been a pleasure working with each and every one of you. I think you're sorely going to be missed uh, on this board. You've added so much to this school district in ways that the public cannot possibly imagine, um, and they wouldn't unless you actually served on this board um, to see the differences and the changes that were put in place uh, to make this a, a better functioning board, a better functioning district, and even through the financial calamity that we've been in for the last four or five years, uh, it's a better place because of you four being here, and I sincerely appreciate the effort and the time uh, that you put into it, and it's been a great uh, time working with all of you. And uh, you know, I wish you all well on your Monday nights off. Thank you. Uh, so, as well as every other night of the week. It has been a privilege. Okay. Um, we can stop being sentimental and move on with the rest of uh, all yours. the business. So uh, we're going to move forward with some routine approvals um, under number 8A. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Second. A through C. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, can we get a roll call vote, please? I have a motion from 8A through C. First, Mr. Shaheen. Second, from Mr. Samara. Mr. Samara. Yes. Mr. Hamill, yes. Mr. Church. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Cox. Yes. Mr. Shaheen. Yes. Mr. Kordowski. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. And Mr. Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Presentations by board members. Do we have any correspondence, Ms. Hamill? No. Okay. Um, Mr. Kurtz, Berks County Intermediate Unit. I will forward out the minutes. I do not have them available at the moment. Okay. Um, Mr. Wolf, BCTC. Yes. Um, the JOC hasn't met since our last voting meeting, and since the fourth uh, Wednesday of the month would be. This, this week with Thanksgiving, there's no November meeting, so uh, the next uh, meeting will be the reorganization meeting. Um, one thing of note that did come out, the National Technical Honor Society uh, released their uh, latest inducting inductees for, for October. Um, within the East Campus, um, where the vast majority of uh, the students uh, uh, attend, five of the 21 students that were inducted uh, were Danny students. So um, that, was a, that was a great representation. To, to be inducted, uh, you must be in 11th or 12th grade, have an academic GPA of 3.25 or higher at their ascending school, have a career package a GPA of 3.6 or higher, um, having missed no more than six absences in the previous year and no disciplinary infractions. Um, so that's uh, obviously a well-rounded student. Those being honored were Mr. Ryan Crawford, design, uh, drafting design, Amanda Ivory for occupational and child development, uh, Kimberly Mathias, uh, culinary arts, Justin Moody for IT networking, and Haley Starris for drafting design. Um, as I said, the JOC uh, reorganization is scheduled for uh, December 12th, on <coughs> campus at 7 p.m. and the public will as well. That concludes my Thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions for Mr. Wolf? Okay. Um, legislative report. Mr. Sheen? Uh, the only thing I, I don't know if everybody noticed, but the Harrisburg did manage to pass their $2.3 billion transportation bill, yet the property tax bill is still sitting. Um, hopefully we'll get some more moving forward, but I don't, I don't hold my breath until next year where uh, our governor can use it to potentially be reelected. Right now, it's it's sitting in committee. Okay. Anything else? That's it. That's it. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Sheen? Okay. Any other reports from any other committees? We had an abbreviated revenue enhancement committee meeting. Um, 
don't know, Mr. Wolf, do you want me to just kind of... Basically, um, we have a, a recommendation coming. We're looking at Market Street is working up uh, some proposals for us. We talked a little bit about that. Mr. Boyer had uh, done some research on uh, different methods of online payment. I don't know, Mr. Boyer, if you were ready to make a recommendation at this point. Very close. Very close. So um, we can anticipate that next month. Um, we were there about 25 minutes. We had a very short agenda, so those are the, the main topics as I remember them. We did a review of the activity fee collection. That was really just a report. It wasn't any action required, so um, that was kind of the sum total of what happened in about a half an hour. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, Finance Committee did have a meeting um, prior to this where we discuss primarily the budget. Um, it's, uh, I think, a copy of that Excel spreadsheet had been provided to all the board members um, for your input and comment. Uh, we're looking at about a $3.6 million deficit. Um, the, it was closed through a series of program cuts as well as um, some fund balance and a tax increase. And, um, you know, clearly there's a lot of work that yet needs to be done on those different uh, levers. And I think we will all be pursuing um, as many options as, as possible, all the options on the table in terms of the budget process going forward. But if uh, board members had questions, those, particularly those of you that are on your way out, uh, had questions or comments, um, you know, clearly we'd like to hear what those are. I, I would just, you know, again, I'm going to pull, I mean, last, last year we were supposed to use $1.6 million fund balance, I believe, round numbers. That neighborhood was supposed to be, we ended up throwing a seven hundred thousand dollar surplus, as we all know. So that's about a two point three million dollar that way. And if my math is right, it's like a four point six million dollar swing on a five million dollar deficit that we had. So I would you know, just caution the new board coming in that look at the numbers, look at fund balance as much as possible, and, and understand that you know you tighten the reins up. I guess this year we're already looking. If the year was that now we're looking to throw a, a surplus right now, we're only short, you know, just a little, just, just about halfway through. So, uh, just before we start looking at uh, you know, cutting sports and kindergarten and tax increases and everything else, let's look the, that, back to that fund balance question again and use as much of that as we possibly can to, uh, to balance that budget without acting too heavily in the program. I can understand that if population deems that we have staff. Well, you know, that, that, that's one thing, but to eliminate kindergarten and, and that stuff is just uh, property values are going to go down and the district's going to be in trouble. Well beyond you know, where we are now. I, I, can, <clears throat> I can make one comment, and that is just based on the work that Mr. Boyer has been doing this year with understanding those numbers and finding where those discrepancies fell in the past. They, they've been doing an excellent, excellent job at, at taking care of that, that issue. So I'm, I'm very optimistic that this year, um, you know, Mr. Boyle will uh, present us with some, some very, very uh, close and valid numbers. I believe we're much further ahead than past years. And hopefully, I know we're always uh, circling away and <coughs> casting down on where we would end up. But I, I, every year it seems to we're uh, not setting really any program. Hopefully we can do come out of that again. I can't imagine that. Kindergarten for one, most of the other programs, uh, hopefully we can come to some kind of mutual agreement and uh, see your way through it. Because it really is about the kids. And, uh, if you don't have program, what's, uh, where's their real learning start? So. Um, I don't, Mr. Boyer, are you able to enlighten us a little bit about the meeting we had with the auditors, or is that too premature? Because, um, um, I mean, I know these things are going to come up. We, we, did, uh, get our, we did get our audit report back um, preliminary. Um, and right now we're sitting just below 5% uh, threshold in our fund balance going to our budget. Um, so uh, the report hasn't been completely issued yet. We still have a piece that we need to do on our end to get to the auditors. Um, as soon as we do that, the official audit will be um, issued. Now, are they going to issue a draft first yes, for I our have, comments? I, have, I, have, okay. I do have a draft copy. Um, We're in next month. I have a draft copy now. 
But okay. I mean, as far as their presentation, did we yeah, iron that out? It would be um, December 16th. 16th. Yes. I guess where I was going with was I didn't want a final draft done until the board had an opportunity to review it and comment. Agreed. Yeah, um, okay. So I have draft copies now that I can provide. If you um, can scan them in and, or scan one in. And, oh, you have them with you? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you hand them out. To, we can I hand them out to the board. a number of copies. Yeah. So I can get them out. That's whoever wants one tonight. Okay. Yeah. But, but again, you said 5% fund balance. I mean, we, we've always gone with a suggested percent fund balance based on budget, but that's only a suggested target. We could run the fund balance down to zero if we wanted to. According to uh, the district's policy on fund balance, it's 1%. Okay. 1% um, isn't very healthy. It's $500,000. Understand, yeah. understand, understand that it's not very healthy, but um, <coughs> in light of you know, where we've gone in the past with budgets, we ended up throwing surpluses and not using it. Uh, and I understand that you're, you're getting a much better handle on it than has been done in the past. Um. Preliminary projections look like we're actually going to be using fund balance this year. Um, not as much as what we intended to use uh, when we passed the budget for 13-14. Um, but um, the numbers could go anyway. I mean, right. look at the cold snap we're having now. Utilities could shoot up. Right. Um, we could eat some of that up or it could get really warm. Who knows? Um, but we're still working hard at it. Uh, we're still monitoring it. And hopefully it comes out to be favorable. We can put money back in. So that's what everyone wants. So. Mr. Boyer, will you uh, have an opportunity to send uh, the board that five-year um, model? Yes. Um, I really want to see that up close. Mr. Selden Ridge did put together a model, um, and I can get it out to you. Um, he actually put together a model that's has um, its user can manipulate it. Yeah, is so you can go ahead. Finance finance meeting, or is that the same one? It's the same one. He just he made it so that way you can you can change you, you can you can you can look at what you can do and you can change the correct cells and it gets you where you want to go. Have, so you, I do have, that. have you guys uploaded that model or some variation of that or the assumptions into the one we purchased? Uh, no, we have not done that yet, but we will. Okay. I mean, because I think if you guys can get that done and get that out to the board, I mean, I know these guys only have a week or whatever left, but, you know, um, I think the other one is a little bit more intuitive <coughs> to see and understand in terms of the graphs and everything else that it generates. You can see how it's yes. going to be impacted from one thing to the next. Whereas uh, the one Mr. Seldomridge put in, it's, you know, you're inputting on several levels in terms of the assumptions to derive one variable at the, at the bottom as opposed to the other way around. But that's just my opinion. I think you guys should have both so you can see both. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I mean, we pretty much, the finance committee, a couple of you guys are there. Um, we spent the whole time just talking about budget. So. Very, very nice presentation. Thank you, Liam. Yeah. Um, if I could just... Um, I want to echo what Mr. Sermonaro has said in the, um, obviously while we're getting poised to find a new business manager, the team of Mr. Boyer and, and Mr. Seldom Ridge and my chipping in as I can, uh, the, the two of them are putting together very nice, um, some nice controls and Kim's uh, perspective from his 25 years plus of, as a business manager has you learn every day when you think you know you know it all. You find out something new and you really didn't know it all. So he's been a big help to us, and uh, he's helped put the um, the information that's down on a piece of paper this year so far. Uh, he was integral in, in getting that to this point. So I want to thank. I was him. very impressed with the, the PowerPoint that you know, actuarial data, population data, income data. I mean, he, that was probably the most statistically relevant relevant thing we've had in a long time to look at where we think the population of this district is going and why. Mm -hmm. We can always say our population is going down. We can always say that we're going to have the next, you know, 100 students less in five years, but it doesn't, when you actually look at this, this explains several reasons why that's going that way, and it was uh, uh, very telling where, where we're going. I think our goal here is to put together a comprehensive uh, PowerPoint plan and presentation for a budget meeting to come up um, in the next four to six weeks and have that presentation for the public 
so they understand where we are, where we're starting from, and why, and what assumptions we're using, and why, and start that budget conversation going forward. So very similar to what we've done in the past. But I agree. I think he didn't. He and Mark have done an excellent job. Um, it was a good find. Uh, any other comments? Any other reports? All right. Seeing none, uh, anything from buildings and grounds? Quiet. Okay. Uh, financial approvals. Uh, we have a motion to approve the attached course and credit request. A through C. A through C. We have a second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing no discussion, can I get a roll call vote, please? Uh, motion for from 11A through C, Mark Kirsten, Mark Kirsten, Mark Kirsten, Mark Kirsten, yes. Kirsten, yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to personnel approvals. 12A through D, second. 12A through D, um, and that includes... As amended. Uh, yeah, as amended, as it includes C3D. Okay, um, we had a first, and who's the second? The second was Mr. Wolf. Uh, Mr. Sheehan. Okay, um, any discussion? I have a, one point of clarification on 12C42 under uh, supervised volunteers, this Frank Sermonero, that's my son. That's not <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not abstaining. I, I have no need to abstain, correct? Correct. correct. There's no financial gain for it. Uh, okay, there's, uh, it's not, it's a um, unpaid position? Yes, volunteer. That's fine. Okay. Any additional comment? All right. Seeing none, can we get a roll call vote, please? Motion was for 12A through D as amended. Uh, motion made by Mr. Shaheen, seconded by Mr. Wolf. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Fox? Yes. Mr. Shaheen? Yes. Mr. Dowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Sermonero? Yes. Mrs. Hamill? Yes. And Mr. Basil? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Uh, moving on to 13 programs. Is there anything? Colorado programs? Quiet. Okay. Uh, policy? 14C. Okay. Motion for 14C. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, can we get a roll call vote, please? Uh, transportation? Nothing. Nothing? Okay, old business. We have a motion. Motion for 16A. Okay, so moved. Second. Wait a second. I, I do have a uh, proposed amendment to 16A. Uh, the motion would be to approve the memo of understanding as presented uh, by the Zone Education Association with the following revision at Article Roman numeral 4, line 2. The words were indirect should be deleted. Which article was it? Uh, article Roman numeral 4, line 2. The words or indirect would be deleted. Okay, and so. I would ask for a uh, approval of that revision by the um, yep. mover right. and the assessor. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, can we get a roll call vote, please? First by Mr. Sermonero. I mean, I'm sorry. First by Mr. Shaheen. The second was Mr. Sermonero. It was a the motion was 16A as amended by solicitor. By the solicitor. Mr. Potts. Yes. Mr. Shaheen. Yes. Mr. Trudowski. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. Sermonero. Yes. Mrs. Hamill. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. 
Yes. Yes. And Mr. Basil. Yes. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, we have a motion to approve the committee of the whole meeting and the reorganization meeting. Okay. Right. Okay. And um, we have a first, we have a second discussion. Um, I think what we're going to we're going to use the the Monday, as I understand it. Um, one, two, three, four board members can't be here for the meeting um, the third? on the third, Tuesday the third. Um, I have I have a zoning hearing I have to attend. Mr. Trudowski had a business conflict. Mr. Kurtz has a conflict, and Mr. McLaughlin has a, uh, a, a conflict as well. So uh, I do understand that one of the um, uh, board members elect may have a conflict. I've tried to reach out to that person uh, today uh, to see if something could be done to accommodate that. I have not heard back. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would uh, believe that would be uh, acceptable. Okay, so if she can't be here for, uh, present uh, physically, she could take the oath via the phone and vote on any of the officer positions? As, as long as she was able to uh, participate in any related discussion to the action items. Now, how would you substantiate that the person take the oath is actually the oath? Well, I mean, again, uh, you, you come across a situation that oaths are administrated uh, or administered in uh, hearings when telephonic testimony is allowed. So you would just have her identify herself, you, you actually say raise your right hand, and then administer the oath as okay. if she were present. Okay. So at this point, do you have eight that can we, definitely? Yeah, we have eight that can make it on Monday night, as I understand it. And... Um, um, and one that may have to call in. I haven't been able to, to contact her to speak to her about it. But she was the only one that I understood to have a conflict potentially with Monday night. Um, whereas, you know, four of us won't be here so on Tuesday night. Five, I mean, it makes, unfortunately, it makes sense to move into the, to that Monday night. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things where you want all nine to be present physically if they can. Absolutely, I want all nine of them to be here. Uh, and that was sort of what we were looking at. There was a lot of discussion of, uh, for the last two weeks of where we could, you know, whether we could do it later in the week. It just got worse um, as we went later into the week in terms of conflict. So um, that's the reason why we brought it to the board uh, for your consideration and discussion. So um, if there's no further comment or discussion, we can vote on it. I, I would just like to say, hopefully going forward, though, that, you know, say this wasn't advertised or they didn't, wasn't aware of it, all these other things are advertising as an election official. Uh, your duty is to be here. So I just like to put that out there because we all went through that four years where you, you couldn't make it, you couldn't be with your family, you had other work commitments. Uh, I've tried to be here as much as I could. So I think most of us have. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, and, and I think if it was just for one or two board members, then I, I can say maybe where it is, but five versus eight is, is, is pretty significant. So. Yeah. Okay. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Motion was for 17A. Motion made by Mr. Shaheen, seconded by Mr. Pop. Mr. Shaheen? Yes. Mr. Trudowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Shimonero? Yes. Mrs. Hamill? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Pop? Yes. And Mr. Basil? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Um, I'd like to bring it up from the floor. Sure. Um, it's my understanding that the board would uh, like to entertain a proposed resolution regarding the appointment of an acting district superintendent. So um, uh, I will read that proposed resolution and, and, and ask for a board motion and second on that. Uh, whereas it is the judgment of the Board of School Directors that as a result of the unexpected early retirement of Dr. Gary L. Adams, uh, as District Superintendent of the School District and the continuing vacancy in the position of Business Manager created by the unexpected resignation of Danielle Penza and the uh, inability to permanently fill these positions uh, at this time, an emergency situation has been created where the district needs to act swiftly in order to assure a, a, a continuity of service for the operation of the district 
whereas Dr. Patricia B. Sanker served as district superintendent for the South Middleton School District from October 2000 to June 2013 and has other extensive experience in, the pub in public school administration. Whereas in order to deal with the emergency situation presented, the board believes that Dr. Sanker, Sanker will be able to assist the district and so, until such time as it can complete its, super, its search for a permanent superintendent. Whereas uh, the district desires to engage Dr. Sanker, who is currently an annuitant in the public schools employees retirement system to address and assisting the emergency situation effective December 2nd, 2013 and ending no later than June 30, 2014 where the maximum amount of time that Dr. Sanker can continue employment based on the requirements of Act 2004-63 and Act 2006-5, whichever occurs earlier. Whereas, um, or based on the, the foregoing whereas uh, clauses, the, um, Excuse me, strike that. Whereas, in accordance with the provisions of the Public uh, School Employees Retirement Code, uh, specifically Section um, 8346, Prince Small B and Prince, the district desires to return Dr. Sanker to school service for a period not to exceed the maximum requirements as set forth in law. Now, now, therefore, the uh, district or the Board of School Directors proposes to uh, appoint as incoming acting district superintendent for the time period from December 2nd, 2013 to December 31st, 2013, um, Dr. Sanker. And this time period is to allow for a transition period uh, uh, where Dr. Sanker can uh, work with um, Dr. Otto, and also to provide services uh, subsequent to the actual last day work by Dr. Otto, which would be uh, or December 20th, 2013. Um, whereas uh, the board, or, I'm sorry, the board also uh, appoints Dr. Sanker as acting district superintendent for the term beginning. January 1, 2013, and ending no 14, later 14. 14, and ending no later than June 30, uh, 2014, or the maximum amount of time that Dr. Sanker can continue employment based on the requirements under applicable law. Whereas uh, Dr. Sanker agrees to devote uh, her working time, skill, labor, and attention in the fulfillment of the duties of acting uh, or as incoming acting district superintendent and acting district superintendent during the term of this engagement. Uh, Dr. Sanker shall have a regular work schedule, schedule that will give Dr. Sanker sufficient time to fulfill the duties uh, pursuant here too. And it is anticipated that uh, her work schedule will be uh, three to four days per week for the term of this agreement. Dr. Sanker's compensation shall be uh, based upon uh, the payment schedule developed by the district business office uh, on the basis of $750 per full workday worked on site in the district, less ordinary and legally required withholdings, whereas Dr. Sanker shall not be entitled to any fringe benefits paid to any administrators or other employees of the district, including but not limited to health, life insurance, or sick days. Uh, nor shall Dr. Sanker be entitled to any uh, expense reimbursement uh, during the term of this contract. The uh, district reserves a right to terminate uh, Dr. Sanker's employment as a, uh, incoming acting district superintendent or acting district superintendent with or without cause for any reason or no reason uh, except for a reason prohibited by law, upon 30 days written notice uh, forwarded to Dr. Sanker by certified or registered mail return receipt requested. Whereas uh, Dr. Sanker represents that she uh, 
presently and shall at all times during the term of the engagement uh, have a duly issued and validated certificate to act as superintendent of schools in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And um, the district uh, for the board authorizes the district solicitor and board president to final uh, the actual contract language uh, between the Board of School Directors and Dr. Sanford. So moved. Second. Could you repeat that? Luckily, it's important. Okay, so we have a first and a second. Any other discussion? I just want to say to the, uh, to the, for the benefit of the public, um, the board's interview with uh, Dr. Sanker, and we were very impressed with her qualifications. Uh, we're looking forward to working with her. We think she's going to be an asset to the school district uh, in the time that she's available to us uh, and while we are pursuing a full-time position uh, with the district uh, for a new superintendent. So um, she's looking forward to working with the board. also note that her compensation will actually save the district money above and beyond what is currently already budgeted for Dr. Otto. So that is correct. Although that number does sound high, but we take out the fact that she will not be reimbursed for mileage, she's not going to be reimbursed for tolls, or she has to, she's out in Mechanicsburg, so staying overnight uh, is, is on her nickel. Uh, it, it it's, will be a significant savings to the district. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just want to uh, put a comment in as well. Um, as part of my transition out of the district, I, the board uh, allowed me to participate in the, um, the succession plan. Um, as someone who's been a veteran administrator, um, I was very pleased with um, Dr. Sanker's qualifications. She's been a superintendent a lot longer than I ever have been. Um, Although uh, I've been in central office a long time, there's no substitute for that. So she's, she's tried and true. I, I think she's going to um, bring a steady hand to the district in the time uh, when it certainly will need one. And uh, I will work uh, earnestly with her in the remaining time that I have to bring her up to speed and make sure that the transition is very smooth. But um, I think the board has made a wise selection. I'm glad we were able to uh, Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, can we get a roll call vote, please? Motion is for 17D for Dr. Sanker, Acting District Superintendent. Motion made by Mr. Shaheen, seconded by Mr. Sermonero. Mrs. Trudowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Sermonero? Yes. Mrs. Hamill? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Kirk? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Pott? Yes. Mr. Shaheen? Yes. Mr. Basil? Yes. Motion passed. I will reach out to her tomorrow to let her know. Great. I might even call her tonight on the way home. Please do. Please do. Um, any other new business? I have one comment, not more of a personal note than, than new business. I, I just wanted, this is my last opportunity to uh, uh, be here with you folks. And again, I wanted to just say thank you very much. It has been a privilege and an honor to work with you all. And I also wanted to say, Dr. Otto, Best of luck to you. Thank you, Frank. And, Appreciate uh, it. You, you've done a great job for the district, and I've really enjoyed working with you. And Likewise. Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, any other comments? Uh, one other note I'd like to just make uh, everyone aware of the field trip request uh, for Amity Elementary, the fourth grade Lancaster uh, Museum trip, and also the Democracy Elementary Science trip. <laughs> TC has been doing that for a while now for us too. So uh, they've been a, an enormous help. In the trenches, finding fun to do that. So hopefully, kudos to them. Okay. Any other comments? What? Again, one more question. Yes. There was uh, uh, there was the first annual Sing the Music fundraiser. Yes. 
that was held this past weekend, championed by Mr. Wolf, and I just wanted to say how, how great of a time that was. And, uh, we appreciate Mr. Wolf's efforts in, in leading that effort, and it was a good time. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be another one next year, and, and uh, they gave me credit for that. That's my point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to her as well. I, I, I think you've raised some money for, for uh, a great cause, and it was a good time. Well, all I is for everyone to have a great time and, and you know, raise money for a worthy cause. I think we, I, I'm confident we accomplished both of those. Yeah, it was a rounding success, and I think it's the first small step in something, a tradition that will grow and be a great asset to the community. So thank you for, for organizing it. Thank your wife. Thank uh, Miss Lamont and everybody else who was involved. It was it was really a great time. And Mr. Cockle, because, uh, and Mr. Cockle, is he here? There he is. Did a great job as our MC and, and uh, auctioneer. auctioneer. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Seeing none. Um, any presentations from the public on issues? Yeah, you ought to sit. You ought to sit right down in the front, Mr. Cobb. Yeah, we're going to give you your own microphone in the future. If you one or the other. He likes the dramatic walk down the aisle. I think. Okay. Uh, my question is about the new superintendent. Yes. Uh, I was doing some numbers. That looks like it's around one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Salary based on that she would work a full year here. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Dr. Otto's salary right now is 140. Okay, so that does not include salaries and benefits. So the, the, the stipend that she's being paid is an all inclusive stipend. We're not paying her peasers, we're not paying her health care, we're not paying anything else. If you were to take Dr. Otto's salaries and benefits, it exceeds that number of $750 a day. Um, additionally, she's not working a full five-day week. She's here four days a week um, to help us through the transition period for the next six months. Okay, so you're saying Dr. Arnold's benefits were well over $50,000? I think they came out to around $800 a day when we did the math. Okay. I, I asked the last month if I could get those see those numbers to see what the administration is. And we have the teachers full payout. That's correct. But we don't have... And you did ask for that, and I did see your email that you sent, you know, as a follow-up to us. Mr. Wolf had asked the administration, and I had asked the administration to make sure that no, those numbers got put up on the website. And I believe, Mr. Boyer, you had acknowledged that they were posted this morning. Okay. So you can get online and take a look. Okay. Okay. Um, So we're going to be paying her seven hundred and fifty dollars a day. That is correct. Four days a week. What is a full day? Is that nine to five? Nine to five. Plus evening meetings as needed. Plus, yeah, she'll be here for the board meetings. She'll be here for committee meetings. You know, and I can tell you that the phone doesn't stop ringing at five o'clock from board members to the superintendent. Nor do the emails stop on the weekend. Right. So she's available to us twenty four seven. Okay. And I'd like to say goodbye to the uh, board members that are leaving. If I ever offended anyone, you guys upset. I'm sorry. Uh, I think one thing has to be mentioned. I mentioned it to Frank the other night. It was his uh, idea and with his ability to have all these meetings recorded. So if there's any questions or problems years from now, we can, as the public, come back and look at those meetings. So thank you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see you out here in the, in the seats. Yeah, I'll the school board. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Governor. Four years ago, we were still meeting over Matthew Brooks. So we moved over here. I think it was a great step along with the recording. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cockle, for your comments. Any other public comment? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.